See yourselves as the actors and actresses of a stage production. See poker as the playwright or stage director. Poker gives you a role to play. And if you don't know what that role is on any given day, you're gonna mess up. Some days, your role is damage limiter. You have to survive an onslaught of brutal variants and play the part as best you can, having the least losing graph possible. Less losing than the graphs of your peers when they're dealt those shitty cards. On other days, like my day yesterday, your role will be to frolic in the joy of a winning session as you hit monstrous hand after monstrous hand like this and like this and like this and like these on days like this your job is to keep your ego in check continue to focus on maximizing ev and that's what we're going to do today did i make the most out of this winning session let's find out by reviewing 54 hands before we get started if you want to achieve graphs like the one i just showed you more frequently then you can check out cash injection on carrotcorner.com cash injection is a highly exploited of course which recommends 10 easy to learn easy to apply exploits designed to dominate your opponents check it out at carrot corner now let's get to the video All right, guys, we are here with a sea of coins. It's raining money, 100 NL Russian cash on GG Poker. At least it was for me this morning. We have 54 hands to review today. 54. One for every playing card in the deck, including, of course, the Jokers. Don't discriminate against the Jokers, guys. They're important. In fact, they're much more important than, like, the Five of Diamonds. Who cares about the Five of Diamonds? Am I right? All right, let's go. Let's get started. Let's see how we do here. Men open from small blind, recreational player, we're in the big blind with the king of diamonds, ten of clubs. We go ahead and make the peel, jack, seven, three. This is a board that is okay for our range, it's a fairly neutral environment. We decide to peel the c-bet. This is a really standard defend if you're folding two broadways with back doors and some showdown value. In this spot, blind versus blind, then you are playing far too tight, my friend. You're not playing good poker at all. In fact, you're playing very bad poker and you should be ashamed of yourself. Seven of hearts. And I think this is probably just a fold now. If we had something like King-Queen here, I think we can call again. King-10 is a little bit in danger of being a frail hand, like not beating all bluffs, and might not qualify, therefore, as a bluff catcher. I don't think call would be, like, terrible here, but I think fold's a little bit better, so we opt to do that. Queen-Six of Diamonds, we open small blind, or called by the big 996. We start with a check here, both small betting and checking are going to be fine. Check, check. We start with a check again on the turn, I think. This hand is getting close to, like, block bet for value domain, but check is going to be the primary play here. Yes, you have a flush draw. No, bozos, no. That does not mean that you have to start betting indiscriminately. Why did you bet here, student? Because I picked up equity. What does that mean? Does it mean you had a value bet? I don't know. Does it mean you're bluffing? I don't know. I just bet because I picked up equity. Wrong. <laughs> that is not a reason to bet. Either you're value betting or you're bluffing. I feel like this is quite thin for value, not ridiculous if we go small, but we opt to check this time. River, you can go for value bet here. The thing is that this pool is probably going to overstab the flop with a 6 or with 7s or 8s. It's probably going to overstab the turn with a 10, and therefore it just has like a ton of ace high, king high, queen 4 suited random shit like this. I think their range is way too weak here, so go for a check on this river. This is fine in GTO, we're blocking the 6, which makes it harder to get called. If we weren't blocking the 6, you'd do a bit more bet with this hand. This might actually be a pure check in GTO. This hand, look up on the solver, solver nerds, and let me know. Unfortunately, villain doesn't bite this time, but I think when their range is a bit weaker than average here, just going with the check is going to make a lot of sense and going for the slow play. When you're out of position, it's not the same as being in position. You can slow play a lot more hands, because your opponent still has the opportunity to bet. That's important. 10, so peel in the big blind here. 10, do this queen with two diamonds. Obviously flop the dream, you could 3-bet pre, you could call pre. Obviously always check raise. I'm going to go pretty large here. My value region is going to be deuces, queen 10, and 10s, and therefore big sizing works. Maybe some ace queen could work here as well for value, but it wouldn't go much wider than that against hijack. Villain calls, the recreational player I believe, we go for the large turn bet. Sizing up here, a little bit more than what they call geometric, the nerds love to talk about that. So we're going to go 2e in this spot, we're going to go geometric sizing. Probably funny for like an onlooker that's not a nerd, like watching me call someone else a nerd. It's like, look at these nerds fighting between themselves. That's funny. That nerd called that other nerd that he made up in his head a nerd. 
hilarious nerd wars so we go for the large bet here i think like the worse your opponent is the bigger you want to go there's double flush draw this means range is a very margey your opponent has a lot of draw pair plus draw combo draw things of this nature going big just really can't hurt here yes you can go a bit smaller i actually think it's slightly lower ev the magical thing with a solver is that they're totally useless that's right you heard it here first guys if you give a solver this spot and ask it, hey, what's the difference between betting 21 big blinds and 27 big blinds, it will calibrate the opponent's strategy with perfect elasticity. That means they're going to respond optimally to each sizing, and it won't matter. It really won't matter as long as you go above a certain threshold here. It will be a very small EV difference, if anything, but in practice, I think a bigger bet just performs better with this hand due to inelasticity, the fact that humans don't contract their range enough when we increase our sizing. On the river, you might want to cry, you may be unhappy. Oh no, the flush always gets there when I have a set. Boo hoo. But hey, you still reach the spot with like 75, 80% equity. You still get called by plenty of worse hands. If you check, it's not clear that check folding is even viable at all. Therefore, you should just jam for value and you will get way more money in against the calling range here than against a betting range if you check. So not betting this river is ludicrous and laughable and shameful and awful and atrocious. And you shouldn't do it. If you can think of any more adjectives for checking this river, write them in the comments. Villain calls with King Queen, and we win a stack. Nice. Snowmen on the button. Go for the three bet here, little ISO three bet. Villain decides to four bet. They're like, nah, man, I'm a pro. Look at me. I'm going to four bet you. Look at my sizing. It's like just under 3x. Look at me. I'm like, nah, I call. I don't care. 766, six, reasonable board for a range. If anyone has sevens or sixes here, it's definitely going to be us. Safe board for our 9s, 10s, jacks, queens, monopoly. It's not that we have a monopoly on those hands, but we kind of do. We at least have them way more frequently than Villain has them. Villain, of course, has the aces, kings advantage, has more like big cards that whiffed as well, more like offsuit ace, queen, ace, king, suited king, jack, stuff like this that we're not going to have as often, but we'll still have some of that as well. We decide to peel the flop bet here, which is just around half pot, a little bit less than half pot. So we peel. Five of Clubs comes in the turn. I'd expect this is a card that if it gets jammed, people are probably just under bluffing this spot. Like if they jam this spot for near pot, one, I don't think that's actually the play on three flush turn. Although on this three straight turn, it might be because hands like eights and nines now have draws in our range here. Hands like seven, eight have draws to go with the pair. The more merge the button is here in terms of like having middling equity, the more the out of position player can go ahead and go bigger. So jams maybe I think here, but I think it's more just third pot. If I did face a bet here, I'd be inclined to think this was getting under bluffed. I would peel third pot against Jam. I have a pure call in GTO, I'm sure, but it would be a little bit tricky in real life against this pool. You do have to overfold in big pots here. We check back anyway. I think this is fine. You could go for like a small bet on the turn, but I don't really love reopening here. It feels like the hand doesn't need a ton of protection. If Villain does have two big cards with a club, they're probably jamming on me anyway and I have to be prepared for that. I just don't think there's a whole lot of denial to get here. I don't think it's worth reopening. And again, on the river, we probably have the best hand a lot now, but not always. People do go into their shell with jacks or queens in this spot sometimes, but then don't fold. So I don't think we can value bet the river. I don't really see what worse calls we check back. We went against the absolutely out of line, the disrespectful A7 of diamonds. If you ever get four bet by the A7 of diamonds, you can basically know that your opponent's disrespecting the hell out of you. And you should do something about that. You shouldn't stand by and just let that happen. So in this instance, we did some rude GG emojis at this player and won the pot from him. I think that was enough to get revenge. Queen Niner Clubs in the big blind, we go for appeal. Horrible flop, going to be folding here. This filter, by the way, is hands that saw the turn. Check, check. On the river, the ace of spades comes. We decide to check again here. We need to be pretty careful with our bluffs on this node. Like, we can definitely bluff some lower cards here, like 8-6 or 10-8 or 10-6 suited that unblock the folding range. I think Queen Nine of Clubs just has a bit too much in the way of blockers to the folding range here. Queen 9 of spades would of course be a lot better, it would unblock more folds as our opponent is more likely to bet those hands earlier. In fact, clubs are the not worst suit to bluff in a passive check 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 line, but they would be decent suits to bluff in more aggressively played lines where the opponent has filtered towards backdoors. In this case, it's played so placidly that they filter away from backdoors, and thus, the clubs are the worst blockers. If that went over your head, don't worry, it doesn't really matter. It's just a nerd showing off about what he knows about poker. It's fine. Check check, and we lose to King Jack. Seems normal. Pocket potatoes on the button. We open the small blind three bets and we call. Three, three, four. There's a half pot C bet. We call. There's a five of clubs on the turn. They check. We bet quarter pot. You can check or bet small here. If you think about it, your range is going to be mediocre pocket pairs and bluffs and maybe some hands like five, six or ace five or something that wants to bet here. I don't think ace five ever bets here, but you get the point. Going to be mostly motivated by thin value and denial. So we go for the small bet. Villain rips it. This is a reg. If this was like a weak, nitty, horrible player, which it probably just is, to be honest, 
you could maybe hero fold here. I think this is a pure call off in GTO. You're unblocking bluffs like Ace King, Ace Queen. You're unblocking bluffs like Diamonds probably just can't do anything but get this in here maybe even like sixes make some weird hybrid jam against you sometimes hybrid meaning for various reasons maybe sevens does i just don't think we can fold maybe nines even plays this way from time to time by villain as it gets called by worse so we may have a value beater here i don't think we can fold in game i felt like oh man i'm just taking the worst of it in this spot which of course we are but we're getting pot odds we run it twice it doesn't show us, so it does show us both rivers. We lose both, of course, and woe is us. We lose both rivers when drawing almost dead. We're so unlucky. So we're down a buy-in, but the session's about to get better. This is in chronological order, guys. Don't worry, it's only up from here. Ace, eight, six. Going to be checking a lot on this board. I don't really feel that strongly about it. You can bet small at a low frequency globally on this board, meaning with your range. This hand can bet around the global frequency, probably, maybe slightly more often. It doesn't really matter. We decide to check back this time, we make a straight, we go for a large bet, villain folds, what can you do? Blood from a stone, king deuce of clubs on the button, we open, get called by a big blind, gonna go for a load of small c bets on this board, this one gets peeled. Go for the turnover bet here with the overcard and a really juicy, beautiful turn for our range, especially at the top of it. I don't think you only want to be overbetting your straight draws here, you do have an absolute ton of them. I would rather overbet something like King Deuce of Clubs than King Deuce of Hearts, Diamonds or Spades for similar reasons that we talked about earlier. We're unblocking the backdoor folding hands with this hand like King 8 of Spades or something like that. So I think this bet's fine. Maybe it's slightly loose to do this all the time, but people just overfold this spot. If you look this spot up in a solver, what you'll see is that these really dry turns are quite difficult to defend often enough in, and so I think our opponent's likely overfolding. It works. Obviously we were right. We're really clever. King Jack off in the small blind, we open 963, we go for the check, they bet, we go for the call. If you fold that spot, that's right, you're an absolute nit, you should be ashamed of yourself. We check the turn, it goes check, check, and this river, yeah, I mean, this is close, this is really, really close. Like, for one, Villain could have some pocket fours, ace x that can fold the river. Ace x shouldn't bet the flop super frequently, though things like ace 5 and ace 4 can definitely be here, and are probably folding to our bet. I actually don't know if the nut king high here is supposed to bluff the river. It feels like it still has quite a whack of showdown value. Then again, our range is doing pretty well, though there are some hands worse than this in our range that we can bluff with. Overall, I think this is close. This might be a GTO bluff. It might not be. I couldn't really decide. Opted just to check here in game. Saved the bet here against the 9-8, which was nice. This hand is probably never folding after this action sequence, but there are parts of villain's range. Of course, we do gain by betting against like fours or race five or something. My feeling was that there just wasn't really enough stuff that was folding that was better than King Jack here to warrant betting the river in reality. The flop sizing here is also going to matter. Half pot's going to be slightly more polarized, slightly less likely to be ace x, at least in theory, than some other sizes. That said, recreational players will just randomly bet ace 10 here for half pot, so who knows what's going on. Close river spot for sure. If I had any lower showdown value than that, I'm definitely bluffing. Pocket fives, we peel. Ace, queen, four. By the way, let me know in the comments whether I'm meant to bluff that king jack there. I'm really intrigued. It feels close to me. Go for the big C bet here. I think this is really close with fives with a club with multiple backdoors. I suspected I couldn't fold yet, but it will be quite close against big bet. We call. Check, check. And on the queen of spades river, we of course still have some showdown value villain. It's terrified of us here. Absolutely scared for their life. And is like, no, I'm not going to bet the turn with one of the nut bluffing hands. Obviously, you don't have to bet with this hand, but it would be really frequent, I would think especially after the big bet on the flop, because then it would have lower showdown value. So queen six, we open small blind calls, flop a flush, go for like sixth pot. We just do this, we bet one big blind on monotone boards. If you're wondering why, I can't be bothered telling you, it would take way too long, I've got way too many hands to go through, sorry. Four hearts on the turn, we go for the big bet, villain folds, not much to say there. King Jack offsuit now, we peel, the big blind could also three bet at low frequency, and the king of diamonds comes on the turn. We decide to lead here, you could also go for a check raise of a small bet or a check call of a larger one, all roads lead to Rome, villain folds. Going to open the ace queen, get called by small blind. We were actually timing down here on multiple tables and I just smashed the bet button here. I would use big bets on this board. I think with the queen of spades in our hand we can definitely bet. With a hand like ace queen of clubs we're closer to pure check territory pocket sixes. Definitely pure check territory when we're playing the big bet or check polarized flop strategy. Villain peels, the king comes on the turn, decided to just go for the overbet here. We're deep and we get to put the fear of the devil into our opponent in this spot. The demonic fear of the devil, that's what this bet instills. How would you like to go ahead and play for some stacks at this stack depth deep? You're going to call me, the pot's going to be 65, I'm going to rip the river for 3x pot. What are you going to do? What are you going to do unless you have queen 10? If you have queen 10, often you're going to raise me on the flop. I also block some of the queen 10. 
So yeah, going to go nuts here just apply pressure deep. It's going to be really good. Even if we get called on this turn, I think we can go nuts and like overbet the river. We might not necessarily think that all in is the best play, but probably going to be tripling there quite a lot. The queen of spades is not a bad card after you overbet the turn and get called because then the things you're blocking are actually good bluff catches in GTO, like queen jack of spades, king queen of spades. You know, villain can't call your turn bet with the queen five of spades. That's utter trash poker. So don't just look at one spade and think it's a bad blocker. You've got to use your brain sometimes, guys. You've got to think and know it's annoying, but you've got to. Open ace queen, this is the hand of the day. Ace queen offsuit, get three bet by the small blind and make the call. They go for a small bet. We go for a little raise here. The plan was against this weaker player, we'll just raise, get it in. Random hands can jam on us like flush draws, ace jack, ace 10, ace 5, ace 4, pocket 4s, pocket 5s. Random stuff like that. Villain can also just call down here with under pairs and stuff. I, li I like playing this quite fast. We turn the queen and here with double flush draw, I decided to actually just bet this sizing. I could also jam. I don't really know what looks stronger. Maybe this looks more terrifying to villain, but I just figured I'll just leave a bit of room for them to do stupid stuff like jam a flush draw that they can actually call with if I go all in or perhaps like call a bad hand and then bluff jam the river out of frustration or something. I feel like this just opens a few more doors and all in, but I think both plays are totally fine. Check's not wholly unreasonable either, but there's a little bit more equity to deny here than normal because Villain has a bunch of hands like Ace-4, Ace-5, Diamonds and Hearts and therefore just betting the turn on double flush draw when you block neither draw is probably okay and good actually because if a flush comes in the river and they have that draw you will lose. You can't boat up on those cards, right? It's not like you have a hand that can do that like a pocket pair. Kind of rambling here. Ace-9, open the button, get called by Big Blind. Gonna check back a ton on 6-4 Deuce. I know my own game really well so I know I'm checking here. Gonna just show this one down, I don't really see any reason to bet. This is just a classically overbluffed line. If you look at this and think, Oh, you're just never bluffing for the small bet. Stop speaking in absolutes. This is not a binary game. This is a game of spectrums. It's a game of percentages. It's a game of big demographic populations, some of whom do X and some of whom do Y. You don't just get to be like, They never bluff. Arr. Like, if you do that, have a good look in the mirror. Really ask yourself, what am I doing speaking in absolutely binary language like that in poker in 2023? Who do I think I am? What's wrong with me? These are the questions you should ask. We went against King 8. Let's move on to the next hand. Sixes. Go ahead and open King 8, by the way. Not a bluff, I don't think, on that river a little bit. Too far up, bad blockers, etc, etc. Villain has to be careful. People aren't careful. Ergo calling is good. Peel here with sixes. If you haven't taken anything else away from my videos, calling is good in small pots where ranges are wide. Calling is very good. So this goes check and check back. You could also bet small here, but we're not playing that. Well, we are playing that actually. Could you bet small here in a three bet pot? Maybe you could with sixes with the club. Yeah, this is a fine bet. We decided to check though. Villain goes for a half pot. We decide to call. This is by far the best play at this SPR. Just leaving stuff in villain's range. Normally when the SPR is low in a three bet pot, you want to play in this weird counterintuitive way where you fast play like your king queen and your race king here, and you can jam those hands on the turn, but you slow play your sixes. This is the way it goes in a lot of these three-bit pot situations. You just slow play the hand that's a bit more invincible. Ace of clubs on the river, not the best card in the world. We have a couple of options. We can jam. We can bet kind of smaller. I decided to bet smaller here. The idea was this. I feel like people might have aces and kings here and are being tricky trappy on the flop. This was a fish, by the way. I knew this. And so I had a little bit of a fear that there was maybe aces and kings, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. Sometimes random fish just check top set on a flush river or second set because they just get weirded out for no reason. So let me just bet this size. There'll be some elasticity here, you know, a wide and villain's calling range quite a bit with this sizing compared to jamming. How much is a bit unclear. But yeah, this is an anomaly hand. I wouldn't normally downsize in this spot. If I thought I had a near nutted hand, I'd normally jam. But here I just thought there's a little bit of money to be saved against aces or kings and I might get some ludicrous crying call for this sizing like pocket potatoes, no club. Don't you just love it when the potatoes call you on a board like this? Next time you're in the card room, you know what to do. Turn to your opponent and say, did you have potatoes then, mate? Yeah, yeah, did you have potatoes? That's what you do. If you're from London, if you're from America, do it in your own accent. You don't have to be all cockney about it. Cockney, by the way, is an accent for people from a certain part of London. It's not like a rude insult. Unless you don't like people from London. Okay, so we go for this sizing. Villain decides to call 3-bet pot. Going to go for tiny here. Opted to give up this time. I don't feel that strongly about this. You could bet third pot again here. We decided not to. Jack River is great for a range. It adds a few value bets, a few block bets in the form of like ace jack and stuff like that. Removes a lot of our air. Decided to block here. I'd take this line with pocket queens, ace jack, king x, things of this nature. Gets it through. It only needs to work 25% of the time. 
Villain's going to get to the spot with a ton of random pocket pair and some ace queen and stuff of his own. So this is going to be a nice little bluff. Cheap bluffs don't work that often, but they don't need to. You're getting a really good deal. It's like buying quite a bad car, but only spending £40 on it. You could probably sell that car for a couple of thousand. Good deal, even though the car kind of sucks. That's how you should think about bluffing sometimes. Call King 10 and Jack Jack 8. Check. Bet. Call. Gives us a gutter here. Decide to overbet. This is, you can go either way here. I decided my value region was going to be things like boats, good jack X and 10-9. Therefore, I just decided to start unleashing here. Billing called and then tank donked the river. And I was like, lol, thank you for telling me that I was dead. I really appreciate it. I love it when they do that. King 10 again in the big blind. How many times are we going to get this hand blind versus blind today? Check, check on the flop. You can definitely start betting big here. I just mix big bet and check. You can bet small as well, but I don't really play that way when I'm float betting, which is stabbing for any boomers out there that haven't heard the, the new terminology. By new, I mean like 11 years old. Go for the turn bet. Don't get paid off. Onto the next hand. Jack nine off. I'll always peel this against under the gun men open. I just think it's good. Hand's going to play nicely. Got her on the flop. Going to peel this one. Can't really do anything on the turn. We fold. Next hand. Seven, eight of hearts. Go for a peel. Check. And call. You can raise hands like this at some frequency as well. Against half pot, I opt to do a bit less raising. If you think your opponent's overdoing it here, though, then you can raise a lot with this hand. Ace turn, big bet. I feel like weaker players, this was another recreational, by the way. Weaker players on this card are probably just under aggressing. I think this is a really under bluff spot against early position. So, despite the fact that we have live outs against some stuff, I think this is a pretty comfortable fold. Against late position, where ranges start wider, everything's different. Position makes a big difference on how wide you want to bluff catch. Ace King, a call from the big blind here, and we go for the small bet on the King 86. Gonna go ahead and overbet the turn. We have a massive nut advantage. If you want to learn which turns you should overbet, it's ones like this. It's ones that you basically don't even notice. The turns that you want to overbet are like the people in your school that you went to school with that you never really thought about again after school because they were that boring. That's the kind of turn you want to overbet. That blank canvas of a person, I can think of like four or five at a push here, if I really pay attention, people I went to school with, those are the turns you want to follow through big on. For value and for a bluff. No guys, not with the pocket potatoes, not with the middle of your range. Don't be bozos. Do it right. Do it with a polarized range. Do it on these innocuous turns. It'll be good. Villain folded, by the way. I know you don't like it when I don't show you what happened. They folded. I know you really hate that. I'll try not to do it again. You've told me off many times in the comments for that. Check flop here. I decided to lead for an overbet here. The person waved at me as if they knew my GG name. Disrespectful. I feel like they knew who I was and they were terrified. Makes sense, right? King nine of spades. We open the call in the big blind. Going to be just peeling this donk bet. This is a good board to donk bet for big blind. People get carried away once they start building donk bet into their strategy here. They're like, I'm so clever, I donk bet flop, it's good for me. And then they have like all of the combos of Queen Jack of Clubs. So it's like, okay, let's peel, let's see what goes on here. And yeah, we win this one with a turn bet. Okay, Jack 9 offsuit, we make a light defend, but I'm all for light defense. I feel like I can dominate and outplay everybody like this. Absolutely dominated. 10, 7 of diamonds, we open the button, it's called by the big blind. 7, 7, 6, what a flop. Opting to check back a ton here, I will slow play a little bit of my trips on this board. The idea is that my opponent should do a load of turn leading. They really shouldn't on this card, but they do anyway. In this spot, I decided my opponent's range was probably quite strong on the ace. Mostly a mix of high equity draws, ace x, and was too margy. I just expected my opponent would really overlead the ace x region here. So although in GTO, this is probably mostly a call with very little raise being played by strategy, the opponent's range in GTO is going to be incredibly polarized, selective, built around trips and bluffs with a little bit of ace for value, and it's just not going to be worth doing a load of raising. The opponent in GTO will also be pretty aggressive on the river and will like overbet at you sometimes when you have trips and stuff like that. Humans don't do that shit. They're just lazily leading. They're like sloppily sitting there on the sofa, eating Doritos or other crisps. Potato chips for you guys that are not in the UK. And they're going, I hit the ace, I lead. So we're just like, cool. Let's raise, let's maximize value. They folded, I guess they didn't have it this time. Oh well. Can't be a psychic, guys. Aces, queen, six, four, go for a check. Gonna check raise here, doesn't materialize. Go for a check on the turn. Gonna check raise against this sizing. Takes it down, not much to say. You can bet or check raise, either flop or turn. Turn when you have two aces, you block a little bit of calling range, like ace with a spade and things like that that would check back, but wouldn't really bet. So therefore you want to slow play because if you block the calls and the check backs, you unblock more of the bets, so. You get bet at more often when you have two aces, so you check. Easy. Okay. We defend blind versus blind. King, queen off. 
check big bet call. As I said, I build my float bet range around sort of good value bets and bluffs here. Bet kind of sparingly on boards like this, but sometimes going to go for the overbet on the turn here. I don't think this is too thin. I think blind versus blind, it's nice to just terrorize people with these. My value region is going to be probably king 10 plus, I would think. So some king jack, some pocket four, some pocket three, some king four, some four three, some king three. I don't think I bet jack four or jack three on the flop. So yeah, it's mostly stuff like that. Villain calls, we river two pair, we have the best hand here very frequently. I think ace 10 can play this way, so we might lose to ace 10 here, which is quite a lot of combos if villain always plays it this way. It is like a bluff catcher on the turn after all, so it could happen. So we just go for the non all in bet here, the non over bet doesn't get paid off, but what can you do? Not getting paid off much today. The session would have been a lot better if we got called down a bit more. We just made the nuts over and over again. Ace 4 5, check back on the flop here. Just want to be playing a high check frequency on Ace 4 5. If you look at that board and say it has an ace on it, I'm going to range bet. You need to go back to poker school. The carrot poker school is a good example of a poker school. You can check that one out on carrotcorner.com. It's your theoretical mammoth cash game course. On with the hand, we face a little block bet here. We peel it. And then on the river, we face another block bet. Standard call. We have a value beater. We can beat ace here. And we can also beat bluffs. I think this is a bit too thin to raise on this card. But it's close. If this wasn't a diamond five, I would consider raising ace jack. I just call villain has ace 10 and we win. Queen, Jack, offsuit on the button, we open, fill and calls, 563, gonna be checking back a ton. You see the pattern by now, guys. A lot of these low coordinated boards are not ones we're gonna be see betting too frequently. Four straight on the turn, villain leads, they can have it. Pocket eights on the cutoff, go for a cold call, you can also three bet, check, and we go for the small bet here, you can also check back. Ace turn, we just start shutting down. We have a shred of showdown value here. We'll win against people who are not very good at cards and don't realize that hands like five, sixes, seven X and pocket eights at the bottom of their range and they should probably bluff those hands. Villain lets us chop with eights here. I'm not sure we're allowed to do that. This is such a good run out for Villain having played the hand this way. Maybe eights is still a check, but I do think that sixes or something would definitely have to start bluffing now. This is a case of recalibrating for the fact that hands like sixes and eights, etc. have really dropped in showdown value on that run out and through the action sequence of my opponent calling my flop step. Oof, this is tough today, guys. Ace Jack, I've got a lot to say about these hands, but I just can't say it. Check back here, hit top pair, go for value bet, get a fold. King seven, open blind versus blind. Check the flop, it checks back. Check the turn, it checks back. Check the river, it checks back. We went against queen nine. Villain really can't bluff everything here. If they do, they really start to over bluff. King seven has just enough showdown value to start showing down. If we got here with a hand like king three or something, we would consider making some bets. I believe that's where the threshold is anyway. Ace deuce of clubs, get cold called here. Always checking the spot, it sucks. This turn, I mean, I don't hate block betting here exploitatively. I think this is a pure check in theory though and an easy check fold, not much to say, don't want to spew there. King 4, we go for appeal, queen 9, 8, mono, checks back, I go for a block bet here, this is going to like really ask villain to define what the hell is going on, if they have the straight flush or the nut flush or the king high flush, very often this is going to get raised, otherwise they're going to call. I think this is a nice sort of, I don't know what we should call this, but it's like a spot where you definitely want to just over bluff the river, meaning bluff more than GTO would say. I think my hand makes a really nice bluff anyway, with blockers to some of villains like bigger flushes, like kings with the king of diamonds and stuff like that. We decide to overbet, just saying that we have a big diamond, which we could easily have, or the jack of diamonds of course, and villain folds. I think this is a nice line. You're kind of filtering your opponent into capping themselves and then making a bet that is just going to make loads of their range uncomfortable. I really like this bluff. Pocket kings, we go for the open, get called by button, get squeezed, and we go for the jam. This is a play I really like. This is the sort of play that puts them in a really shitty spot whenever they have like jacks, tens, nines. People love to squeeze with the recreational player in the pot. One way to take advantage of that is just to play jam with queens, kings, and ace, king. You never jam with aces, that's a pure call, because the denial it gets by jamming is kind of useless and you really want the weaker player in the pot here. Calling in slow playing kings comes at a bit more of an equity realization cost and that you let your opponents realize more equity. I don't hate it here, but yeah, I feel like jam is better than small four bet here. And we do actually run it twice against, you guessed it, the potatoes. We only win one. We run so fucking bad. Four or five of clubs in the big blind and we peel them in open. We could lead this board, but we don't because we think these idiots see bet too much. Let's let them hang themselves. Check, gonna peel the turn. And then on the Queen of Clubs River, it is time to check and hopefully win. This was a very placid looking recreational player. I don't hate bluff catching in general in spots like this, but I just opted to fold this one against this guy. Pocket Cowboys now. Little open here. Three bet, four bet, call. 
go for third pot. On double flush draw, there's tons and tons of stuff that's mergy in your opponent's range here. The more mergy your opponent's range, meaning the more draw equity, middling equity, pair plus draw equity your opponent can have, the more your own range and in particular this hand will benefit from playing shove. We do play a lot of like quarter pot again here, third pot again here at SBRs like this in GTO, but not on boards like this. This is a pure jam. With the King of Hearts, like I don't even think you should check at this SBR. At a bigger SBR with the King of Hearts, I think you can like check jam. I think at this SBR, you just do a ton of shove here with your value. I didn't show you the results. You're going to kill me. We ran it twice against pocket eights and we won both. Pocket jacks, we go for 7BB ISO here. Going to go for a large bet on 9-9 deuce. I don't think there's a ton of 9x like limping under the gun. I'd go a bit smaller if I had a redo at this one. Not because I'm terrified of the 9 and like losing my nut advantage or anything. More just because I think that it's unnecessary at this SBR to build this quickly. Villain does it for us though. They jam. I've never seen an easier call. And this occasion we get a gift from the Ace 3 of Spades. Thank you very much, sir. It's really appreciated. Or madam. I mean, what can I say? If you want to donate, you can also check out CarrotCorner.com and buy some courses or coaching on there. Hey, it might even help you to lose less money at the poker tables. You can also donate this way by just putting your stack in with Ace 3 of Spades. King 9 offsuit. We go for the open. Get called. Queen 7 3. C bet's good here. Against an unknown, I'm quite a fan of just C betting this hand on this board. The reason is that recreational players at low stakes tend to overstab the turn if you check and overfold the flop if you bet and under raise the flop if you bet. Pause the video, think about it. All of that means you want to bet the king nine off and you want to check back with the pocket potatoes. You guessed it. Potato rolls off on the turn and we go for a check behind this time. You could also barrel here. This is a really frequent aggressing spot. This time I opted to go for bet check bet instead of bet bet. Either way is fine. I think this is a pure bluff here. We basically block a lot of the 10x and queen x hands that could call. I don't think we block that many folds, although we'll block some. I feel like this is a decent candidate to go for a bet check bet line. It may be a mix in GTO. It may be pure. I'm not too sure. 7-5 tanks for a while and then calls us. Reasonable call. Yeah, definitely a hand that doesn't block too many of our bluffs in theory. So if you want to go down the GTO rabbit hole, I think both players played that hand okay. Pocket sixes, we check the flop on jack jack nine, they bet small and we peel. Turn is a ten, it goes check check. River is a six, gonna go for the tricky, trappy, screw you mate. Let's see if we can get you to bet your jack, let's see if we can get you to bet your overpair. Let's see if we can get you to bluff your... Huh. Ace four, ace five, king seven, stuff like this. Let's see if we can do all of those things. Villain bets this sizing, we say screw you, they pay us off. With Ace Jack, they thought they were betting small to induce guys. Villain was like, uh, so I'm gonna bet small to induce. And I was like, well, I have the nuts. So you've successfully induced. Well done. I guess the gambit is that people don't slow play enough. So the small bet can cause people to rep stuff they just don't have in this pool. So that's one argument for what Villain could be doing. Villain could also just be like checking the turn betting the river small because they're trying to maximize the amount of the time they get called rather than the magnitude of the pot they win, which we all know from grade two lecture six greed theorem in particular is the theorem here in the carrot poker school that that is trash poker. But not everybody knows that. People like to get called. They like the feeling of being showered in coins more often than being showered in nothing. Coins are better than nothing. So of course they seek that feeling. That's wrong. You should always maximize the magnitude of what you earn when you have a near nutted hand, so villain's bet is too small on this river. Pocket jacks. Go for the big three bet, get called. Go for the big turn bet, get called. Horrible turn. Villain has quite a bit of 10x here. They have queen 10 suited, jack 10 suited, 10 9 suited, and 10s, and maybe ace 10 of diamonds and spades. Maybe king 10 of diamonds and spades. Really any king 10, actually. Just a load of 10x. We go for a check. I think this is a turn where our range just wants to check super frequently. Block bet's not out of the question here. If we go like quarter pot or third pot, villain goes small. I don't think we can jam or anything. If we jam, I think we just run into a 10 way too frequently when money goes in. I don't think people even bet enough of their lower sets here. And a lot of the time on such a wet board, they're going to raise nines or sevens immediately. So we just call, we check the river. If we face a jam here, honestly, I might just fold. I think there's just way too many straights in villain's range, but they check back with 8-7 and we scoop a nice one. Ace queen off. Go for the 3 bet in the small blind, queen 5-3, we check against the recreational player here who bets the flop, we go for check raise, which seems good, people tend to stab a bit too much in 3 bet pots in position when checked to, so I'm always a fan of going for check raises with things like ace, queen, king, queen, kings and aces here, basically nutted hands. We go for this sizing on the turn, I think we could have gone a little bit smaller here, I don't want to go too small, 
I also don't really want to check in this spot. I just don't think villain's going to have a load of natural bluffs, even though we do unblock draws. They're going to call again if he has like king, jack, and spades. We just want to find a sizing that these hands can't call profitably, but we can still get value from them if they do decide to call and they'd be making errors. This might be slightly too big, but I think it's okay. I think at this SBR, I could have gone closer to third pot here than half, but yeah, it's fine. Maybe like 40% pot's a slight improvement. Villain folds after a long tank. Jacks, and we go for the call. You can 4-bet here. I don't really like to for two reasons. One is that we're a bit deeper than normal, so the EV of felting jacks by 4-betting and calling a jam, while we do have to call the jam, it's going to be a bit worse than normal. So we decide to just, um, and the other reason, sorry, is that I think that I just have a skill edge and I want to use it. I don't want to let people off the hook. And I'm good at flopping top boat. I check, and of course I slow play, because everyone knows you should slow play hands like this in 3-bet pots. Of course you should, because your opponent's drawing near dead. Check, check. And then we go for the tricky trappy check on the river here, I think. You can also go for a bet and hope that you're running into like nines or tens or something. But the thing is, name me some hands, guys, in this spot, in the hands of a human, that are calling a big bet by me, but not value betting themselves if checked to. Over pairs are calling, but they're value betting if checked to. If they even exist, usually they're just going to bet turn. Jack X, I basically block it, but it's kind of always betting if it is there. And then hands like sevens nines tens i think these are usually betting and then if i bet i feel like people might overfold their ace king ace queen combos i think in game theory this is the kind of hand that bets a lot because it unblocks ace king ace queen nines tens like a load of calling hands but in practice i really honestly don't mind just checking and being a bit trappy here i just don't feel like ace king or ace queen or something is gonna bluff catch often enough if i go big here and I think that Villain might just have too much air that's over bluffing and might just bet call 10s every now and then because they've leveled themselves into that potato madness. So go for the check. Villain checks back this time with Ace-Queen doesn't bite. What can you do? Doing a bit of tricky trapping on the river here, as you can see. Ace-King of Diamonds. We open. We get called by Big Blind. Queen-6-6. Six, six, goes check, check. 10 of Spades on the river. Goes check, check. Sorry, 10 of Spades on the turn. 10 of Diamonds on the river. Check, bet, fold. Blood from a stone. Can't get it out. And then we go for the race with Ace Queen Blind versus Blind in this one. 10 6 4. I check back here. You can also bet. I do bet really frequently here for 60% pot, but sometimes I check. Villain decided to go small. I called with my gutter some showdown value and some opportunity to bluff certain rivers. Villain bets this sizing. I think this is an easy jam for value. Villain calls, and they had the same hand. Kind of disappointing. King Queen off now. Call in the big blind here, 654. You could lead like a lot of stuff here. This is one of the hands I would lead less frequently than most other stuff in my range. Villain checks back. I'd also lead more against under the gun than button because ranges are more asymmetric there, and I have a bigger monopoly of all the low cards than I do against button, who also opens these low cards from time to time. Deuce of Hearts comes in a turn. I just do a ton of leading. I think the snow is very overfolded, and Villain's just going to struggle. And then we follow through on the Jack of Diamonds River. Just doing a load of bluff here. I think it's a super good spot for a range where we have a ton of value bets. Basically, my litmus test for bluffing River is something along the lines of how uncomfortable will Villain's range be on mass facing this bet? And if the answer is like very uncomfortable, like Villain will regularly be feeling like they are just caught between a rock and a hard place and that their hand kind of sucks, then that's going to be a spot where fold equity is higher than in GTO, typically speaking. Jack seven of clubs, we call and it goes check, check. We check the turn. Villain bets pot. We call somewhat reluctantly. Honestly, that sizing is kind of scary from a recreational player after they check flop. I don't hate folding the turn here, as nitty as that looks. Then we do fold that river where it's really quite hard for them to be bluffing. Everything just sort of gets there, so not a great spot to pay off. Go for the squeeze here with ace 10. Gets called. Check, check on the flop. Decide to check the turn here. My plan was just to check turn and then bluff river really big. I would slow play over pairs twice at some frequency. So I decided to tell the story that that's what I was going to be doing here. This hand is a bit lousy. This is a good turn for range. It's probably not a disaster to bet here in theory. Check is also fine when villain bets. We have a pure fold. Pocket nines. We go for the three bet. We get peeled. Ace, 10, 7. We check. This is against a short stack recreational. This board is running out like utter hell for us. We decide to check. They bet kind of large. I really don't think there's anything to do here. While we're not 3-betting 9s pre with the intention of folding post-flop very often, there will of course be anomalies, and if we're too rigid in our thinking and refuse to fold in a spot like this, we're setting money on fire. You couldn't set these coins on fire because they're made of metal, but the paper version can very much burn, and that's what we would be doing here. King Jack off. Go for the call against the small blind open. I think this is a pure action against small blind men. Maybe you can do some 3-bet against really bad players for value, and we could have done that here. Decide to call the flop, you can also raise. 
call the turn. And on the river, I mean, this spot kind of sucks, honestly, but you might just have a value beater. Villain might just have Queen Jack or King Jack or something. They may just be bluffing. The timing here was really quick. I felt like I was against like Ace Jack, Aces, Kings, Queens, two pair pretty often after this timing from this player, but overall I think it at three to one it's just a little bit too good and you probably are gonna win around twenty five to thirty percent of the time here. So we call and lose, we will usually lose, but that's okay. Ace Queen, again, we peel the under the gun raise. Start checking here. I mean we have a load of showdown value, there's really no reason to bet here at any juncture. Fill and checks down with King Queen, we win a nice little tiny pot but every little helps you know every pot counts a seven of hearts we open called by big blind this one is a small bet that gets raised we peel this was an interesting decision villain sizing here is really good i just felt like my hand blocked probably the maximum amount of bluffs that could possibly block people are not very good at just bluffing with no equity in this spot and nor should they be you shouldn't be betting here without you know a decent amount of equity so if the bluffs are like seven five nine seven seven four ten seven like, how do we block more bluffs than with this ace? So I figured we just fold this ace and call with, like, ace, king, ace, queen that just don't block bluffs on this occasion. And we also have our sets and two pair to call with. I'd, I'd also rather call with something like, I don't know, even, like, king eight or something ostensibly could be a better call than ace seven because villain's bluffs are usually drawing to the similar number of outs against each of those hands, but at least with, like, the eight or the six, you're blocking sets as well as two pair. With a7, you're blocking some two pair, but yeah, I think this one is a fold. I don't think it's the right blocker to go ahead and peel there. 10 9, I think this is the final hand of the day. We check call the flop against a recreational player. Turn goes check check. On this kind of river, you usually don't want to overbet on four straight. You're just narrowing villain's range a bit too much in the direction of straights when you do that. So we just go for this sizing. I think it's about right with the equity we get the river with. You go for like pot or a slight overbet there, maybe as well. And we win against the King Queen. That is the end of this hand report. I hope you enjoyed watching this winning session. It was fun to run good. It was fun to play well. And I'll see you back here on the next video. Don't forget to check out CarrotCorner.com for all of our educational poker content. Bye for now.